Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is You've Got Five Options show. With Lasse. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi, Lasse, our wonderful technician. And with our yet another special guest, Rachel. Rachel. Hi, hi. Some of you guys who are listening to us regularly, you may remember Rachel, Rachel Lule from our live show not so long ago. So our live show was so great that we have decided to invite Rachel again and discuss a bit more about entrepreneurship. Yes, guys, if you would like to listen again to wonderful Rachel and our live show recording, you can visit our uh, YouTube channel. It's on YouTube, as you could imagine. You just have to type in You've Got Five Options and the recording is there. Rachel was talking actually about matchmaking and about uh, relationship coaching, which was extremely interesting. Or if you are more of a podcast person, please go to our website, the5options.com, five as a number, and then go on the podcast from the menu. And then you can see all of our wonderful podcasts, including the one with Rachel. So Rachel, very happy to have you back here again. Thank you for having me. And I'm very excited. Yeah, me too. So Rachel, I have the killing question number one. Already? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Who are you, Rachel? Wow, that is a huge question. Who I knew I? that. Yeah. Who am I? I knew that. That's why, you know, a killer question yeah. to start with. Yeah. Well, I think I would describe myself as, let me try to put this as simple as possible without overcomplicating it for some individuals. But I think I would describe myself as um, a seeking soul in this world that really wants to love and give back and do well on the journey that I've been given to live in this world. And besides that, if I'm to give it titles, then I would say I am a mom of two kids and I am a matchmaker. I'm a professional matchmaker. I have a, a bachelor in innovation and entrepreneurship. So I, of course, I'm an entrepreneur. I can also call myself that, <laughs> like literally. And yeah, I think that's like a short description of me. I love it. It yeah. was so beautiful, the first sentence uh, that you. you put there, because many people, they just start with, well, I'm a, you know, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, <laughs> yeah. I'm, you know, and your answer was, you know, with this extra first part. So it was thank beautiful. You. And uh, thank you for that. Thank you. And too. Uh, today we have invited you here yeah. so that we can talk to you about uh, your five lessons learned on your way to becoming a successful entrepreneur. Oh, yes. So this is a really interesting topic for me. Yeah. I have been a person that has been working, always employed by someone else. And this topic of entrepreneurship has been quite interesting for me and more and more and more interesting yeah. in the last few years. Yeah. So I am really looking forward to having this uh, talk with you today yeah. and hearing your five lessons learned. Yeah, because I'm also very excited. I can't wait to share my insights with all of you. So yeah. the first thing that I wanted to ask you about before we go into your five lessons learned mm -hmm. was to ask you, why did you decide to become an entrepreneur? That is a good one, too. I think I decided to become an entrepreneur because of the freedom it would give me. That was my first initial thought is I want freedom. I want freedom to do the things I want without anyone deciding what I should do or should not do. So first and foremost, it was the freedom. And I thought of, oh, imagine if I could just go on vacations anytime I want <laughs> with my family. Imagine if I could go to Africa or to Uganda, my home country, for about two months without having to report that to anybody. So it was absolutely the freedom that really like made me even want it more in the beginning. But as time goes on, I'm really moving towards to wanting to solve a problem. 
I um I think one of the things that I think entrepreneurship brings is that it brings a lot of growth to you as a human being and you end up solving so many problems for you know your customers or whoever it is whereas and you're doing it because you love it and you're doing it on your own. It's not somebody else pushing you to do it. So in that way, you gain a whole lot of growth, be it professionally or personally. And because of that, I am absolutely addicted to entrepreneurship. Okay, so what yeah. is entrepreneurship for you? Entrepreneurship for me is going out in the world and putting your blueprint on the world, if you can call it that. It's letting your light shine. Entrepreneurship for me is doing something that you really, truly love and you do it to serve the world in some way or the other. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't it, know. it actually is. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I have to say that I love this idea of the blueprint. I can definitely see how this is difficult when you are working, employed by someone else yeah. who has his own blueprint and only rents your services. And many exactly. times you are limited in your creativity exactly. or your view. Yeah. The other thing that came to my mind when you were saying about, uh, you know, solving problems, what I experience as as an entrepreneur, because I like to call myself like this, yeah. is that you not only solve problems of others, you are faced with your own problems. Absolutely. And I think uh, one of the biggest lessons for me was all the shortcomings I have had that were not so visible when I was employed yeah. because there was a structure yeah. that was given to me and someone was taking control of my time yep. and on what I was doing of the sequence. And that was annoying me, I would like to say. <laughs> but then again, I had to do it by myself. And I have to say that there were moments when I was totally overwhelmed yeah. because not only you want to put that blue blueprint out and help people mm -hmm. but you also have to cope with yourself i have heard and actually that's a question to you girls yeah. that uh, most of entrepreneurs who are starting with even a fantastic idea mm -hmm. fail first time or actually fail and never try again mm -hmm. because they are not mentally ready to mm. be an entrepreneur. It's not so much about if you have funding or a great product mm. or great marketing. Mm. It's about the mental pressure mm -hmm. of of simply handling all of that. Yeah. What do you think about this? Because I read it somewhere recently and that was very interesting for me. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that we're going to be tackling in some of my lessons that I've learned. And absolutely, I would say that is true. That is very, very critical when it comes to becoming a successful entrepreneur. No, it's okay. We are in a studio. There are microphones here and the studio is uh, quite tiny. So uh, we, uh, Rachel, don't worry if you right. just... If I hit something or hit the mic. <laughs> then at somehow. least people know it's real. Yeah. It's like we are not sitting in some isolated environment. So it, it can happen. Yeah. All right. Thank you. But, but uh, yes, we will talk about that later on for sure, Anna. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I was already smiling because I have seen the lessons learned that Rachel prepared for us today. So I knew that's one of the key <laughs> lessons learned. So yeah. definitely I'm very much looking forward to hearing those lessons. So Rachel, would you just uh, mind telling us the yeah. five just right now, just, you know, the headlines. The headlines. Of the five lessons learned, and then we will dig into them. Okay. First of all, I would say the first one will be called Find Your Why. As an entrepreneur, you have to find your why. And the second one is mindset and habits. Having the right mindset and creating, you know, some good habits that can help you on your journey. And the third one is to always focus on solving a problem. And then the fourth one is... Three combined in one, which is discipline, consistency, and persistence. And the last but not least is called have a personal board of directors. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. What's that? See, guys, if I sound like, oh, wow, what's that? <laughs> it's because I have not, I have seen some sort of a first draft of those tips. Uh, yeah. And I know that you have changed it. So when I am surprised, I'm really surprised. Yeah. Good. So, oh, wow, I like the last one. Yeah, it is. That's why I also made it last. <laughs> yeah. So that we can leave the people very much like, yeah. wow, that was because so Because it's awesome. very important. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I think starting with the first one. Yeah. Uh, as a why question. Yeah. It's always this big, big question. Yeah. So... 
tell us what does it mean to you to find your why? I think on my journey as an entrepreneur, being a professional matchmaker and a relationship coach, I have come to realize that it's so important to start with the why, as Simon Sinek says, you know, find your why. If you haven't read that book, please do, because it's so important. Find your why. And when I say the why, I'm saying find your purpose, find your mission. What are you meant to do in this world? What is it that you are unique that makes you unique. If you feel like you're awkward, that could be your little superpower that you have and you just don't know it. So find your why. That's something that really gives you joy and at the same time gives you purpose. And once you do and you focus on whatever entrepreneurship, you know, thing that you want to do and you focus it on that, I think the chances of you being successful would really be high because you will not only be wanting to be successful as a person or be successful and get the materialistic things, but you will also want to really feed this thing inside you that just wants to really, you know, it's your why. You can feel it. You want to feed it and you want to be able to serve the world in some kind of way without it, you know, like being because of external things only. So tell us a little bit about your why. Yeah. Tell us your why journey. Yeah, my why journey. Thank you. For me, my why journey, and this is something I have to say about your why or your purpose. Like, this is not something that is, you can say is like an end road. You find it and then that's just it. It's okay for you to try out things, and that's what I personally found out because I thought that I am I am really good at relationships. I'm really good at communication with people, and I love talking about the deep stuff. I love like going deep and talking about the difficult conversations and being able to confront things that we normally normally avoid talking about. I love that, and I'm very good at that and making it very easy at the end of the day to talk about. So that's why. I really thought that matchmaking and, you know, personal matchmaking and relationship coaching would be the perfect thing for me because I also took a course in it and I learned how to do it and I found it very easy. And when I actually am out there talking to clients, I also don't find it that hard. I've always found it very easy. So it kind of came as a natural thing for me. But as I've been moving along with my journey, I've started realizing that it's not giving me the same joy as it used to. So I may have thought that that was my purpose, but it's not really my purpose. I've come to realize that. I'm, I'm meant for something else and I'm on the same journey. I'm still trying to really figure out what's my purpose. What am I here to do? And what am I here to put my blueprint on? What is my little blueprint so that I can put it on the world? In this case, for me, I've come to realize as much as I love helping people and making a difference in their lives and as much as good as I am at being a matchmaker and which I plan on doing somehow in my free time, it's not really my calling. So I'm on the journey of finding my way. I'm going back to the basics as an entrepreneur. And I think it's okay for us to admit when things are not maybe giving us the same joy as we thought they'll be giving us. And we are not there where we thought we were. It's okay to start over. It's better than pretending or acting that everything is okay. At one point or another, you'll have to accept and be able to start over. So my question is for me right now, should I do it when I'm 32 or should I do it when I'm 45? And I choose to do it now because I really want to find my purpose and put my blueprint on the wall. So would it be accurate to say that finding your why is yeah. one of the biggest lessons learned? Yes. In a sense of that you found out that you your why can actually change. Yeah. Yes, I did. It doesn't have to be that one thing. And that's the good thing about, you know, that when people say, some people asked, what is the biggest, you know, lesson? What is the biggest advice you can give for an entrepreneur, for someone who wants to be an entrepreneur? It's just go and get started. Like, really, just do it. Because when you start doing things, and I, if I hadn't started being a matchmaker and really working with clients, I would have always dreamt and thought and maybe coulda, woulda, shoulda, you know. But at the end of the day, because I've really been in it and I've worked with it and I know exactly how it is, that's why I'm discovering a different part of me that is telling me I have another bigger purpose to serve than this. 
Okay. So, yeah. That's really, really beautiful. Anna, what are your thoughts? Your face looks like ready to come up <laughs> Anna with something. Anna looks confused. <laughs> I, I, f- first of all, now when you said about my face, and when I'm aware that I'm being recorded, well, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> I was thinking a lot about what you were saying because yeah. uh, that's also a surprise for me. I guess uh, going on a cigarette break uh, really didn't allow me to learn <laughs> that much about the updates. But what I have to say is with one thing I will definitely agree, Rachel, that yeah. it's a very difficult sometimes to admit to yourself yeah. that what you thought you are meant to do yeah. is not what you are supposed to do because you have a different type of a gut feeling. Yeah. And I think the the last person we want to admit this in front of is ourselves. Yeah. And I think it also gives us a huge feeling of unbalance mm. and uh, distraction and some kind of confusion. So what now? Yeah. I had all this plan or this oh, dream and yeah, I thought, yeah. but if it doesn't feel right, I think that you need to search further. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking about, I was thinking about my why, mm. and I believe my why is pretty much the same. I know that it will uh, sound quite uh, weird, but I really want to save the world, yeah. uh, one person at the time. But I have also realized that having so many ideas as I have and projects and let's say skills or mm-hmm. talents, I am now trying different projects and things but my very general why Mm. stays the same so I guess the general why in your case I would guess stays the same it does stay the same you want to help people to improving some sort of a uh, relationships between them maybe using some communication yeah. or, or stuff like this I'm yeah. guessing yeah but the little why that was attached to it or the purpose to do it through the matchmaking has yeah, changed has changed exactly but the the overall why? purpose why stays the same it does stay the same and i think that the problem is that we don't have businesses called i am helping people nope. our businesses are i am a coach i am a web designer mm-hmm. i am a, um, i don't know a fitness instructor i'm just saying those things because those are our recent yeah. guests yeah and then we might discover that well but i don't wanna I don't feel like, but your overall why mm. still stays there. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to say to yourself, I don't want to, I just need to find something else. And I yeah. think this is a huge lesson. And I think this is something that many of us have problem with. And I see the parallel between this mm-hmm. and working also employed. Yeah. When you are somewhere, you are excited, you love the job. And then after some time, it's very hard to admit this is not for me, but Mm -hmm. you are in your comfort zone and you are afraid to be confronted with the things that are popping in your heart. You know, this is not right. I need to do something else. So that were my thoughts expressed by my very weird face. Really well. Which probably you can see (laughs) courtesy of camera here in the studio. So just summing up this point. Thank you, Anna. That was really good. Summing up this point that finding your why is so yeah. important when yeah. you're an entrepreneur. But at the same time, it's not very clear for each and every single person yeah. what their why is. No. And you did mention as well, sometimes you just simply have to go out and try it out. Yeah. To verify. And see. Fine. Follow test. your passion. You know, when you have passion for it, it will always you do it. You figure out a way because you won't let the difficulties, you know, stand in the way. You will always figure out a way to get on the other side. Okay. Yeah. I, I just have one question for Marta, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, because I'm sneaky like that. Mm. Uh, there was a very interesting exercise we have done. I think it was two months ago. I am Marta's uh, branding manager, and uh, mm. she was thinking about different things for the future, if she would like to maybe try the entrepreneurship. And we were making this exercise to think, what would you like to work with? Marta, what was your experience with that? It was a really great, uh, I thought that, you know, you might have some ideas Mm -hmm. on what would you like to try yourself with? Like, for example, matchmaking Mm -hmm. or uh, relationship coaching. Mm. You might have some ideas or it it could be something about communication, mentoring Mm -hmm. couples. You could have some, several different ideas. And Anna gave me a really nice exercise uh, for personal branding that helps you get your attention to which is one of those that attracts you actually the most Mm. so 
definitely a good exercise. Yeah, I remember that when Marta, first when I asked you, yeah. what would you potentially like to work with? You gave me, I don't know how many, eight, nine, ten different points. Yeah. And the second part of that exercise was, okay, Marta, now look at this points and think about what you really would like to work with what your heart is drawn mm, to just mm. don't think about what is the most reasonable financial choice mm -hmm. or anything what you really feel like you mm. are really drawn going to. drawn to mm -hmm. and uh, she was able to you were able to actually choose it and yet those things change <laughs> yes that is correct so i think it's very important to remember yeah that not nothing is set in stone no and that you have to ask yourself that question you actually have to keep on asking yourself that question you have to and we evolve oh yes we change over time mm -hmm. so it is okay to find and update yeah. your why it is that's an awesome summary of yes, this it is. update your why yeah yeah so keep updated <laughs> with no, your wife. <laughs> no, like seriously, girls, you know, it's like everyone like find your why, find, find your, your why. why yeah. Okay, I found my why, but now I don't um, think stop. I found the right <laughs> thing. <laughs> Update your why. Yeah. I think it's a it's a really catchy quote. Yeah, it's a it very is. good term, guys. Because you keep on evolving. So mm -hmm. as you're evolving, you make your why also elevate with you, evolve with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for that. And for those of you listeners who would like to explore this topic of purpose more, our recent live show was about the power of purpose. Mm. So you are very welcome to look for it on our YouTube channel or in a podcast application if you are more of a podcast listener. And that being said, I would like us to move on to the second tip. Yeah. yeah. So remind us, Rachel, what's the second lesson yes. learned that you've had on your journey? <laughs> it's okay. The second uh, lesson that I've learned is that I have to have the right mindset and the right habits. And when I say mindset, mindset is such a wide thing. But when I say mindset is that you have to put it in your brain Whatever it is that you want to become or achieve, you have to put it in your brain and say, I am going to achieve this. Come what, come may, I'm going to do this. So you have to have a positive mindset. You really have to start behaving like you've already achieved what you want to achieve in order to get there. So have the right mindset for sure and be positive because if you don't believe in whatever it is that you want to do, then of course it will not work out. And this is one of the reasons as to why many entrepreneurs don't make it, I really do believe, is that they lose belief in themselves. They lose belief in whatever it is they're doing, and that is all the mindset. But if you have the right mindset, if you put your mindset in the right place and say, I'm going to achieve this and I believe I can do it, then you will definitely do it. And the other thing is, of course, as I said, habits. And this goes hand in hand because if you have the right mindset, but you're not acting upon, you know, the mindset and creating healthy habits that do support that goal that you want to reach, then it all doesn't really mean much, does it? And when I say habits, for example, there are so many people who say, I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. But then you sit and watch three, five episodes of, I don't know what, Game of Thrones every day or two or one. Choose to read a book. Choose to read a book that has something to do with you developing your skills in whatever it is that you want to build or to do. And that way you'll be creating a healthier habit that is helping you go towards to achieving your goal. So I say habits and mindset because I feel like it's so important as the second so one. Tell us a little bit about how do you keep your mindset in the right state? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. For me, uh, personally, I meditate. I am a meditation freak, if you can call it that. I meditate every morning and evening, but I'm not really a freak, actually. When I get to think about it, I do have a cousin who can meditate 10 hours a day. So I'm not really a freak like okay. that. When I say I meditate, wow. I mean I take about 20 to 25 minutes every morning and 20 to 25 minutes every evening before I go to bed. And that's really to sit with myself and just be in the moment and just allow me to be me and feel whatever I'm feeling and just be there and be present. You know, it's almost like treating yourself like a dog somehow. 
I have to sit in this position and I have to do it and I have to be in the now. That's part of, you know, you training your habits and you training your mindset to be there at a certain at a certain time, which gives you a whole lot of, you know, discipline at the same time. So in order for me to be in the right mindset, I do meditate a lot because I believe meditation allows us to confront our inner feelings, thoughts, and everything, and can always help us get in the right direction or move towards a better direction than... And we all know we have those little voices in the back of, backs of our heads saying, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> or you know you can do it. You want to go to the gym? Ah, you're too lazy. You know you're not going to do it and stuff like that. Yeah. We all know we have those small voices. But because when you do center yourself and be able to confront those little small, li- I, won't, I won't call them devils because they're part of us, but they kind of are. It's part of our routine or our program, the way we program that we do have these little things that are always negative thoughts but it kind of helps us not eliminate them but ignore them and focus on what's actually positive and that that actually something that builds us and helps us move towards our goal and what about beliefs because you've mentioned at the beginning that if you yourself don't believe that you can make it yeah you are probably right (laughs) (laughs) that's the thing yeah, yeah it's very difficult to make it if you don't believe in yourself yeah so what would you recommend Because you might believe a lot at the beginning, yeah. but then you might face some failures, you might face oh, some yes. disappointments. So how would you advise our listeners to keep up with their belief when the time is rough? Yeah, that is a good one. I think we go back to our first one when you say belief, because when you find your passion and purpose, I believe it goes hand in hand with belief. Because you found your why, because you found your passion, when you go through these rough patches, it will be able to hold you up and keep you going because you really, really feel like this is what you're meant to be doing. So absolutely, belief means a lot in everything that we do as entrepreneurs. If you don't believe it, then you can't achieve it. But once you believe it, it's all in our heads. Let's just put it simply, it's all in our heads. And if we combine what's in our heads, if we make it positive and then add action to it, I really believe nothing can stop us. The right type of action, of course. Okay. Anna, would you like to ask a question to Rachel? Do I have a face again that uh, (laughs) seeks inquiry? Jesus Christ. I really have to think about my my outlook here. Uh, I don't know if it's more of a question, but an observation. This is what I... And actually, I'm curious, Rachel, what do you think about this? I was lately going through a period of a lot of different, let's say, mini failures, Mm -hmm. you know, or let's say some sort of uh, rejections and confusion. Yeah. And it can bring anyone down. Always. And I, I like to always think of myself that all oh, things cannot bring me down and mm. I will always go forward. But nobody's perfect. No. And yeah, I realized I'm a human. Mm. Whoa, what a discovery. <laughs> uh, so what happened lately, for some reason, I started to think more philosophically about this. And I started to be more mindful about observing mm-hmm. the things that are happening. Mm-hmm. Every rejection has a reason. Mm-hmm. What is the reason? Is it not a good place for me? Mm -hmm. Is it not a good project for me? Mm. Maybe that was uh, something that was not meant for me. So this is this more of a philosophical outtake Mm -hmm. on it. The second part of looking mindfully at failures and rejections is how does this prepare me Mm -hmm. for the future? Mm. How does this rejection trains me yeah. to take rejection yeah. because I was a very fortunate person especially in a professional area when I was not experiencing yeah. rejection yeah. almost never. I always <laughs> had it very easy and now I do yeah. and instead of I had this moment, Marta knows, of thinking, I'm so confused what's happening. Yeah. I don't understand this. Yeah. I had a moment, well, but you have never learned that. You don't know how to be rejected professionally. No. Maybe this is a lesson you have to take. Yeah. Not all also because the journey of life brings us lessons, but if you really are serious about being an entrepreneur, how will you manage if you have never Being experienced rejected. a rejection. Yeah. How can you knock to 100 doors with your offer if you don't know how it feels to be rejected? And yeah. then 
how to cope with it. Yeah. Because maybe I would give up after, you know, knocking to five doors because it's like, yeah, I don't understand this rejection thing. <laughs> never have I experienced it. It has to be something wrong because I never yeah. learned it. And I've, I'm starting to think that everything that is happening to me for the past four months mm. has a has a deeper purpose, you know? It, not only it, it uh, teaches me things about rejection, but also mm. opens me to new areas and trains my mental state because mm. I realized that entrepreneur has to be prepared for rejection, oh, yes. for failure, mm. for being ununderstanded, for being neglected. Mm -hmm. So things I have never experienced. Wow. And maybe this is the moment when I have to learn. Yeah. So ladies... With that philosophical thought for the end of the first episode, yeah. I would like to encourage everyone to do listen to us uh, in our second episode where we will be exploring those lessons learned and those deep philosophical topics further on. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's, That's all, folks.